I noticed one more change from the book to the film yesterday when I watched the film for the second time. I have to repeat. A second viewing makes all the difference. I was able to see the structure of the film much more clearly and the character development much more clearly. It's just such a refined piece of film that I really cannot describe it. And so yesterday, with my viewing it again with a clearer perspective, I was able to notice much more awesome detail. And one of those details was this additional change from the book that I think I kind of caught during the first watching, but I didn't really think about it. Or at least I didn't have the time to process it in my brain properly because the plot was developing so quickly. Which, let me mention, I love the fast pace of the ending now. The final act of the film is a complete bombshell and swipes you off your feet. Now then, what is this new change from the book that blew me away? It has to do with the Padishah Emperor toward the end of the film. So first, let's remember, what happens there in the book when the Fremen under Paul Muad'Dib start harassing the Harkonnens more and more and the spice flow from Arrakis is dangerously obstructed? What I remember from the book is that the Emperor finally comes to Arrakis due to several reasons that are kind of vague, at least in my opinion. First, he comes of course because the Harkonnen's handling of the spice production has gone bad and he literally arrives with his army of Sardaukars to fix things as the boss ruler of the universe. Because remember, at that point all across the universe everyone thinks that the Sardaukar are the best army in the world. And so the Emperor decides to land on Arrakis with his army to do firstly damage control and secondly to show off basically, to once and for all prove to everyone he is the number one force in the world, especially in comparison to some alleged wild desert tribes. And he also comes down because he literally cannot imagine anything and anyone standing up to him and opposing him. And so I wouldn't say these reasons are unclear, they are clear enough, but somehow Somehow, the change they opted for in the film is so much sharper and it's such a monumental way to stir things into action and propel the final act of the film. And it is this. Paul, in all his regal manner, slaps his Atreides seal on a message and sends the message to the Emperor on a hard metal copy of all things. In the far off future, literally sending metal printed messages so badass. And in this message, he reveals to the Emperor who he actually is and he challenges him. And in this seemingly quiet, peaceful and serene scene on Katane, the Emperor just walks in his green gardens with his entourage and reads the message. And then after reading it, he just quietly drops it on the ground. And then just a minute or so later, we see a gigantic planet-like object, but made out of metal, start descending into the atmosphere of Arrakis and just piercing through it in a ball of fire. And as this metallic planet descends down into flames towards Dune, the music is quiet, almost silent, and one feels as if this giant planet-like spaceship is flying toward the Earth and the movie theater you're in. And then it touches down and flies over Arakeen, and the sheer size of it just suffocates you as you sit in your seat. And this is how you, as the viewer, feel the full power of the Padishah Emperor. You now know this is not just some guy that Paul Atreides beat. In the story, he ultimately goes down. But this scene makes you realize and remember who he fucking is. And it feels for a moment as if Paul summoned to Arrakis some kind of a terrible beast that's gonna tear everyone to pieces. I just couldn't describe the shivers that went down my spine as the Emperor came down to Arrakis. And the fact that the Emperor's coming was provoked so suddenly and rampantly, I just loved that. It felt so much more effective in making you feel the sheer wrath of Shaddam. And I saw people saying, by the way, online that they did not like his portrayal because he didn't look imperial enough due to his humble clothes or whatever. Like, are you kidding me? Power isn't shown through clothing most of the time. Power is shown through stuff like this. And the Emperor of a Galactic fucking Empire, thousands of years into the future, the last thing that I would think he would use to display his powers are his fucking garments. 
So yeah, this moment in the film when Paul challenges the Emperor and he comes down to Arrakis, this was one of my favorite moments in the film. It gave me the same feeling as that moment from the Silmarillion where this one guy, I can't remember his name, with a fucking sword or whatever, challenged Morgoth to a fight. And the sentence in the book was like, and then Morgoth came. And that's it. That one simple fucking sentence was enough to send the shivers down my spine. And it was precisely its simplicity, actually, that made the shivers stronger. 